Hello, good morning and welcome to St. Catherine by the Sea, Holworth for morning prayer. We're using the order from the day after Ascension Day until the day of Pentecost and it's Saturday the 12th of May. Uh, my app tells me that we can be commemorating Gregory Dix, um, but uh, my book that normally gives me more information about the people we remember doesn't have him down. So we'll just note that and then begin our worship. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory forever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today that we may walk as children of light and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion. Who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So, <coughs> if you put one of those markers in that, or you've got one, um, where we are, and then we'll go to the back of the book for the Psalms, and we've got two this morning, number 21 and number 47. So if you remember, we do the thing that they call a refrain at the beginning and end together. We'll read alternate verses if you're happy with that as we go through. And we say the glory to God before we repeat the refrain and use the prayer that follows in silence. This is alternate. Alternate, yeah. So I'll do one, you do two, I'll do three. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And just leave a short pause at the diamond. If we remember all that, we'll be doing well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It sounds a bit peculiar, but it, I explain it to people as being, it's a traditional way of doing it, that right. the Jews used to use, Jesus would have done, so that's why it's inherited and why it's done right. like that. Um, but it just seems a bit of a peculiar. Um, but I say to people, it's not actually to be exclusive, it's to fit in with that tradition. Yes. And when it was done by the monks, a number of, I suppose a lot of monks were above the average population inability to read, but basically it was kind of lead, so you had one or two people standing at the big book, because yes. there weren't that many books about. 
and they would start it off and then other people would copy and it's designed to be a bit like speak singing like the chanting yes. they do to keep people in time and the the, the, the gap at the end of the, between each line <coughs> is partly said everybody breathes at the same time it's yeah. all practical but it also in a way it makes it a bit like a special reading rather than just reading any old thing you know like when you have a birthday meal and you put out a special tablecloth and all that yes, you know, yes it's a meal yes. but it's done in a slightly so yeah. Yes. So that's why we do it. Like that. So Psalm 21 and then Psalm 47. The king puts his trust in the Lord. The king shall rejoice in your strength, O Lord. How greatly shall he rejoice in your salvation? You have given him his heart's desire and have not denied the request of his lips. For you come to meet him with blessings of goodness and set a crown of pure gold upon his head. He asked of you life, and you gave it to him, length of days for ever and ever. His honour is great because of your salvation. Glory and majesty have you laid upon him. You have granted him everlasting felicity, and will make him glad with joy in your presence. For the king puts his trust in the Lord, because of the loving kindness of the Most High, he shall not be overthrown. Your hand shall mark down all your enemies. Your right hand will find out those who hate you. You will make them like a fiery oven in the time of your wrath. The Lord will swallow them up in his anger and the fire will consume them. Their fruit you will root out of the land and their seed from among its inhabitants because they intend evil against you and devise wicked schemes which they cannot perform. You will put them to flight when you aim your bow at their faces. Be exalted, O Lord, in your own might. We will make music and sing of your power. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The king puts his trust in the Lord. And so to Psalm 47. Oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. Clap your hands together, all you peoples. Oh, sing to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great King over all the earth. He subdued the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He has chosen our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a merry noise, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. O oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations, God has taken his seat upon his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples are gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. For the powers of the earth belong to God, and he is very highly exalted. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. O oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. So we turn back to the morning prayer where we were before. <coughs> and we should find there um, something called the Canticle, a song of Ezekiel. Yes, yeah, so 280.
down at the bottom. It starts the Spirit of God. Yes. So we read that as we did the psalm. Okay. The Spirit of God fills the whole world, Alleluia. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries. I will oh. sprinkle, sorry, yeah, your turn. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness. A new heart I will give you and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Hallelujah. And so we then turn to our Bibles next. And the first of our readings is Numbers 21, which is towards the beginning, about page 1400 mark. Uh, and we're looking at, sorry, 140 mark, 1400, 140. Um, and we're looking for chapter number 21. So we see in the text there are larger numbers. We're looking for number 21. Page 100. The, the bronze serpent. That's right, and it's just a few verses from number 4, verse 4, to the end of that section. Yep. The next heading says the journey to Moab. So it's from verse 4, yep. for some reason they just want us to start there, um, to the end. So are you happy to do that? Okay, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Okay. From Mount Hall they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents upon the people and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Excellent. This is a, um, <clears throat> to my mind, a biblical uh, explanation for that very ancient but also very contemporary image of a snake on a pole or cross. Oh, right, yes, yes. So private ambulances yeah, often see, have it. See, yeah. The barber's, the, pole, yeah. the barber's pole is a stylized yes. version of the same thing. Yeah. And it's a very ancient, some would say sort of pagan, witchcrafty sort of image, but it's basically some, for some reason or other, it's one of those symbols that just, as people might say, resonates. You know, people know it. Yes. Throughout history, it has been associated with the healing. Quite why, I don't know. Maybe because poles and snakes have always been associated with magicians and right. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, if you remember Moses when he went to tell Pharaoh that he was going to lead the people out, the first things that he did was he had a snake which he dropped, uh, a, a rod which he dropped and it turned into a snake. Right. You may remember that and then he yes. picked the snake up and turned back into the rod again. So I think that's this whole business of snakes and sticks and I suppose it goes back to well, you know, if you've got a snake and it's in the house and you get a stick to attack it, then you'll say, you know, I mean, it may just be as straightforward as that, but snakes are dangerous, obviously, but a dead one is not so much. Um, but it's very interesting <coughs> to me that we've got a story here that suggests it's a godly thing. Yes. And it doesn't matter to me hugely where the healing power um, kind of in that comes, comes from. Um, I'm not one of these people that say unless something is done, if you like, in the name of Jesus, 
Um, and, or unless it's done in the name of Jesus, then it might be a bit iffy. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So there are some people who are against all sorts of ways of healing, unless it's obviously a, a Jesus, you know, somebody's prayed in Jesus' name and then somebody's yeah. healed, then it's fine. Yeah. Um, there's all sorts of ways of healing. Yes. And there are some things about different sorts of healing, like if there are lies involved or deception involved, or people aren't actually being healed, but they're just being made to think they were, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's more important to me, yes. because God is the source of healing, yes. if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, it's spiritual rather, than, spiritual rather than medicinal. Yeah. Yes. Um, and even if you're a medicinal, you realise that it actually needs, Something else it might need yeah. chance it needs if you're secular. Boost. It needs boost. Might, yeah. 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 Because it, it's only part of the actual efficacy is explained scientifically. <coughs> so I suppose it's the same like in building trade, you need good weather as well as the people. You, know, you, yeah, yeah, actually, exactly yeah. right. you do need the combination of both. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's just interesting here that the people complaining, um, God sends, it's interesting, God sends poisonous serpents. You know, quite often we tend to think of God just being the source of all good stuff, but it's definitely here that God has sent these poisonous snakes. And then there's this business of the snake on a pole, and if they look at it, then they're okay. And there are connections with the idea of Jesus being up on the cross and people looking to Jesus on the cross and being healed um, and how that healing, because just like it was the snakes that caused the disease yes. in this story, so Jesus takes on those things that are our disease. So it, he looks the same. He's beaten. He suffered injustice. Yes. So the snake caused the problem in this story and Jesus experiences the problems that we do. Yes. But up on the pole, like the snake is on the pole. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It's, yes, I mean, yeah. It kind of, um, that wasn't what was meant when this was written. Um, but uh, we can interpret with our Christian spectacles. Yes. We can see parallels. And my view is that that is okay. Um, I suppose if I was sort of a very anti-Christian Jew, I'd be quite nervous of yes. <laughs> Christians reading my scripture. Yes. But uh, I'm happy with that. So our next reading then is Luke 7 from 18 which is right at the other end of the bible <clears throat> the page numbers start again in this edition and we are looking for page, about page 70 it's the book of luke and it's the big number seven chapter seven which is the bottom of 69 actually i know but we might need to turn the page so it is actually on page 70 yes. and the bit we're looking at is the, the chunk called messengers from john the baptist okay. are you happy to read that all the way through yeah. to where it says a sinful woman for yeah you. Yes. yeah is that all right you okay for doing that? cool yeah messengers from john the baptist uh, the disciples of john reported all these things to him so john summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus had just then cured many people of diseases, plagues, and evil spirits, and had given sight to many who were blind. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them, and blessed is anyone who takes no offence at me. When John's messengers had gone, mm. Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who put on fine clothing and live in luxury, luxury are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among, among those born of women, no one is greater than John. Yet the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people who heard this, including the tax collectors, acknowledged the justice of God. 
because they had been baptised with John's baptism. But by refusing to be baptised by him, the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected God's purpose for themselves. To what then will I compare the people of this generation, and what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say, He is a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, you say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Nevertheless, wisdom is vindicated by all her children. Thank you. I love that we've got, um, I didn't know that what are you like is a Bible verse. How will you like? So, um, in um, a couple of years ago, a chap who I pray with on Tuesday evenings, he drives past one of our villages on the way to Poole from Weymouth, because it's a good, a sort of worthwhile cut through. Um, and uh, he called in one day and there I was. Um, he's an engineer, he works for a company that does timed progression stuff, so sort of belts, you know, in the industry where you have to yes. kind of slice, or the, it moves everything along, all sort of yeah. that kind of... Um, and uh, he gave me a book about um, an archaeologist who's a Jewish, British secular Jew, worked in the Middle East around Israel. His particular interest was sites associated with John the Baptist. Right. And his sort of thesis was that John the Baptist was in the running to become the Messiah, right. like Jesus was. Yes. And I've no idea whether that's right or wrong, but it's very interesting reading a passage like this, where we've got Jesus and John being discussed yes. by the winning team. Yes. Because the Jesus lot wrote the Bible. Yes. John, we're told, was killed by having his head chopped off. See, right um, <clears throat> and uh, so when you have John baptising Jesus, there's this big, big explanation that although Jesus was more superior to John, Jesus was baptised because it had to be so. Yeah. So in a passage like this, we've basically got a, a story, a narrative, a discussion, which is put in there to explain sort of subsequently by the Jesus lot why it is that Jesus is greater than John. Yes, obviously. Yes. But it also is very Christian, if you like, because Jesus doesn't diss John. He just no, says, John is a great bloke. Yeah. Um, and it's almost as if when this was written, Jesus and John themselves perhaps didn't quite know which of them was, because they were both itinerant preachers. Yes. Um, they were both related. Yes. They had both been born in miraculous circumstances. Um, John to a woman too old to have a child. Jesus to a woman too young to have a child. Yes. Um, John sends disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one that is to come? John just said, Jesus just says, go and tell John what you've seen and heard. And that list of things are miracles that have double meanings. So where it's, I just deal with one, the blind receive their sight. Right. If you're blind as a community or an individual, or as an individual you can't see, it's medical. Yes. But if you talk about a community and it's difficult to tell in all ancient texts before the Enlightenment, where we become very individually oriented, it could mean the community or individuals within yes. the community. Yes. And if somebody doesn't have sight, you know, we've got these words, haven't we, in English, like they haven't got vision. Yes. Okay, yeah. They haven't got understanding, so yes. not being able to see the truth. Yes. For That's instance, you can't actually, see, you know what I mean? You can see, so, but you don't understand. Yeah. Yes. So there were miracles in the Hebrew scripture, the Old Testament, that Jesus was going to perform for his people, for the Jews, that had these not double on trunk but like a deeper meaning so he is healing eyes but when he does it to jewish people it's a way of saying i am truth you can now see yes so that list of things there are what are called messianic miracles so that's why jesus says to john's disciples go and tell him you have seen me doing these things because there might have been other healers healing eyes or whatever but or healing stuff yes but you know if an elbow is healed it doesn't quite have that same so that the deaf that can, that can now hear is they understand. Yeah. Yeah. So you can hear God, yeah, hear God effectively. Yeah. yeah you can sense. discern truth. Yes. And, you know, um, so those are special miracles that the Messiah was supposed to do. Yes. As well as preach and whatnot. 
So that's why he said, go and tell him you've seen that. But then he goes on to explain that John is basically a prophet um, <clears throat> and that he is related to Jesus' mission um, and that people who haven't listened to John haven't done what John had said, so whose eyes haven't been opened, whose ears haven't been opened, whatever, who haven't been able to walk because they're lame, they are still dead, so they've not been raised. All those things apply to these people. The Pharisees were a particular, particularly religious sect right. who wanted to do everything right, but they were so determined to get it right that they missed the plot. <clears throat> so that's why they keep coming up against Jesus. Um, the lawyers are basically similar. They're looking at the letter of the law. Yes. They're legalistic, so they missed the plot. Um, and then that closing bit is all about the fact that John the Baptist felt that to honour God properly we should give stuff up. And Jesus thought that to honour God properly we should engage with society. Yes. So John was a taking himself out of society person and Jesus was getting involved in society person. And that basically, I think, just holds the two up as equally valid yes. ways of, of doing and being faith. Yeah. So, lots to uh, think about there. Yeah, it's interesting. Very much so. Just from a, a little <laughs> short yeah. story. Yes, very much so. So, oh yeah, and that word tax collectors there isn't saying that tax is bad it's basically they embezzled and whatnot and used extortion because oh, they were like um under the um, regime in france when the nazis took over you know you have, if you had a collaborator yes um, who might have previously just collected enough tax yeah and they had the power to extort and they were collecting taxes for the occupying power yes so they were generally hated oh, right. in their society so it's not against uh, hmrc um, it's against people who are misusing their, um, their, power. their power and their position. So should we turn back to the Red Book again now as we move towards the end of our service, 281. <coughs> yep. uh, we read the little sort of poem bit up at the top of the page. I'll read all of it, you join in with a bold print. Yep. Then we go on to the Song of Zechariah, the Gospel Canticle underneath. Uh, we just read that all the way through as if it were all in bold print. Okay. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and you kindle in us the fire of your love. love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, fill the hearts of your people. Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your Spirit and, and kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Christ has gone up on high and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. Do join in. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Christ has gone up on high, and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. Let us pray. Feel free to pray aloud or in silence, adding your amens to what I say. I'm going to use some prayer diaries as usual. One God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we thank you for bringing us to the beginning of this day. And we thank you, um, especially this day, 
on Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath, traditionally the day of rest, where um, you rested in the tomb after being uh, tortured to death and before your resurrection on the Sunday. And so we pray for rest for, for all who are troubled in body, mind or spirit. We pray for those who would be released from prison, actual or um, allegorical, whatever. People who are undergoing torture, people who are in difficult situations who would find peace. We pray too for those whose jobs are such that they rarely, if ever, have time to rest. We perhaps think especially of those who don't do nine to five weekday jobs who will be working today. Emergency services, the military, people in farming and food production, people with utilities on roads and in communication, in hospices, hospitals, hospitality, trade and retail. We thank you for them and we pray especially for those who don't have the adequate um, terms and conditions to allow them to have their time of rest so that they may be fulfilled in themselves, have relationships and express other parts of their personality creatively with exercise or however that may be. In Operation World, we pray for Egypt today. We thank you for the innovative use of electronic media, that there's a very widespread response from Muslims in that land to engage with Christian ideas and thoughts that are put about through websites, chat rooms, satellite TV, phone downloads and so on. We pray for the Coptic Church, which is the largest body of Christians in the Middle East. We pray for the church leaders, especially the Coptic Pope, as they call it, or we'll call them. We pray for wisdom, grace and confidence as the church leaders engage with Muslim authorities. The Islamist persecution and the questioning world. We also pray for a reawakening and a, a fanning into flames of the glowing embers of the Coptic Church. We pray too that responses to Muslim agitation will be humble and loving, but strong. Pray for growth and effectiveness of uh, the various movements within the church, monasticism, Bible study, personal faith, of the various renewal movements within the church. And we thank you for the number of Coptic Christians involved in business, the professions and health services. We pray that they will have a positive and transforming effect across Egypt, as the writers say, just as Joseph did a millennia ago. With Christian Action Research and Education, we pray for brothers and sisters suffering persecution because of their faithful allegiance to God's kingdom. We pray for courage to persevere in the midst of their trials and ask God to meet their needs, bestowing his grace and love on each one of these precious believers. From Green Christian, there's a conference taking place called Faith and Environment in Lincoln. They'll be thinking about the significance of climate change in relation to sea level rise, its impact on the coastal county, 
the wider society globally through increased flooding and erosion. Consider how, as people of faith, we might respond as we seek to love the planet and its people. So we pray for Edward Hannah and Alison Baptiste, two of the speakers and those that attend, that they'll be encouraged, inspired, empowered to take that message to their Christian communities and to make a difference. In our benefit cycle of prayer, we pray for church members in West Knighton, that they will grow in faith and in numbers. And we thank you for the people that are in our church membership. Today we pray especially for half of those in Ermoyne Parish, for Anne, Cyril and Cynthia, Carol and Jack, Lisa and Jack, Dulcie, Beth and Alex, Celia and Jeff, John, Keith and Anne, Chris, Kathleen, Elizabeth and Michael, Leslie and Kevin, Peter and Liz, Noel and Alison, Graham and Suzanne, Tessa, Laura, Pat, Richard, Liz and Tony. We thank you for each of these and all that they bring in their time, talents, money, faith. We pray that you'll give them increased experience and understanding of faith. We pray that with them you move us to engage more with scripture, with prayer and service. And as we meet with others that we worship, walk and witness. We pray for those amongst these named for, whose, for whom things aren't going so well. That they will be moved to pray, to ask both you and neighbours and other agencies and organisations for assistance as they need it, or perhaps where others have asked on their behalf that they will be prepared to receive that help. And we pray for those amongst them for whom things are going well, that they will be able to offer and assist where they do that. For themselves, it will build up community where they do it in your name, that it will establish your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.